Good evening and a warm welcome to Weekend Dialogue on Biz Roundup. And tonight in our discussion, we will talk about robotic revolution in the world. And we have with us Chandika Mendes from Virtusa Polaris, who is the global head of engineering at the company. Good evening and a warm welcome. Hi, Indy. Thank you. 20 years of industry experience. And uh, I read in a study recently that... Uh, you know, in the next 20 years, there'll be a major revolution taking over the way businesses are run, and this is by robots. Um, this will also considerably cut down the cost of doing business. But again, uh, we also know that uh, there'll be social inequality as, as things change. But I'd like you to give a broader overview of uh, um, what is really taking place. All right. So as you know, robotics has been around for a while, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you look at the last five years or so, robotics has really taken over some of the manufacturing um, positions. Right. Uh, so after industrialization, I, I think in the last five years or so, robotics has made major, major advances. Uh, but there's really mechanical robots, right? You know, building cars and all, of, all sorts of uh, gadgets and all of that. Uh, but the same has not been true in the services industry. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the services industry, take you know, financial services, insurance, uh, telco, and all of that, it's very customer-centric. Uh, and the products and services that they offer has become very complicated. Mm -hmm. So even if you look at a mobile device, you have so many different services that a telco has to offer, right? So what has happened is really you know, that, uh, that there has been a big gap between you know, the services that they have to provide and the, what the systems support. So the automation has not really caught up in that area. Uh, at all, because you know you are st uh, still dealing with very clunky IT systems, unfortunately. So that gap has to be bridged by human beings. Mm -hmm. That has been a challenge. So if you look at the you know last five or six years, while the manufacturing industry productivity has gone up as much as sixty percent, services industry productivity has dropped by ten percent. So a big big shift, right? So this robotic process automation is really applying the robotics that you have in the manufacturing industry into the services software area. So mm -hmm. anything that you deal uh, with software, you can really automate. And hu anything that the humans are doing with software can be automated with robotic process automation. So we are expecting that same kind of productivity uh, paradigm shift to happen in the software industry as well. But is it really possible in the services industry, the yes. way we've been working? Yeah, um, um, the good question. I mean, if you look at the, the BPO industry, I mean, BPO industry has grown si significantly, I, I think 20 times in the last 10 years or so, right? So if you look at why that is the case, there's still a lot of human work, mm -hmm. uh, human operators doing work. And the reason for that is the, that gap between the IT systems and what the businesses need. So all of that gap is being filled by human operators. You know, they're taking a call, you know, logging into a system, doing something, mm -hmm. you know, taking something in an Excel sheet, feeding that into another system. All of this work that involves systems, different types of systems. You know, it might be a web-based system, some ERP, logging into some co-banking solution and working with Excel, email, you know, all of those different, different systems. But, you know, at the middle of it is a human being, operator. So there has, there's a lot of work being done by them. Mm -hmm. Now, this robotic process automation is about disrupting the work that is being done by the human operators, really. Right. Uh, let's, let's focus a little on Sri Lanka. How far have we made it in this regard, in this field? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, is this really what we want for a developing nation as ours? Actually, you know, we have not even got started in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. in my mind. Um, so this uh, revolution is about two, three years old right. uh, in, in reality. And in the West, we are already seeing that it's gone up the hype curve uh, and about to fall off because, you know, the, what's happened in the West is that they try to apply this in various different areas that are not even applicable sometimes. So right. when that happens, it usually there's a disappointment that sets in, right? We can avoid all that. We can really apply it in the right area. So when you apply innovation like this, what happens is it opens up a whole new area uh, of industries, whole uh, new area of services. Um, so every time this has happened in the, in the past, the economies have grown. So any time you inc increase the productivity, economic uh, the result is economic growth. So I think Sri Lanka can really benefit if we get into this right now. We can significantly benefit by the, by this revolution. We had to be early. But when you talk about economic growth, there's also a problem that Sri Lanka, uh, politically and economically, unemployment, the yeah. rate keeps increasing, and youth unemployment uh, specifically, that area hasn't been addressed. Although we are looking at solutions, politicians coming up with the job promises, but don't you think uh, the implementation of RPA would really affect uh, youth employment or the job market? 
Good question again. Uh, so my, my perspective is that you know when you, uh, for Sri Lanka we need to look at the future, mm -hmm. not the past. Uh, this BPO industry and some of these things that we are talking about is really past. So we, our investments has to be in innovation. Uh, our investment has to be providing services which are really value adding to custom and customers. If we really stifle innovation like RPA um, uh, in 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 favor of uh, creating jobs those jobs are not going to be sustainable in the, in the first place. So I think we need to really provide an optimized environment where some of these technologies can form new you know, opportunities for people. So I think that's, that's really a philosophical uh, direction that we need to take in my mind. But that sounds really complicated to <laughs> me, of course. <laughs> um, again, I mean, uh, I'd like... So I'll give you a good example, yeah. right? I mean, um, in, in San Francisco, uh, I think Keith Mora gave this uh, example in the, at the forum, CIO forum we organized mm -hmm. recently. In the San Francisco, uh, when, when an online taxi company was formed, mm -hmm. uh, everybody thought that's going to be at the end of um, the traditional taxi services, right. right? And at that point, the market was $200 million. Mm -hmm. But the moment this uh, disruption came about, the market turned out to be $1 billion. So the, it really resulted in market increasing significantly rather than uh, reducing. So some of the, all of these innovations really have that kind of impact. But what is the impact on employment of you know people? Yeah. W w ha has there been any research uh, and outcome on that? So so I, I really uh, it's it's really a shift in employment. Every time this has been ha this has happened before. I mean, in, in it happened in the industrial revolution. It happened in the internet age in the 1990s. So uh, best way to think about what's going to happen in this revolution is to look at what happened in the past, right? So if you look at the past, it's always changed the job composition. You know, right. the, some of the jobs go away, no doubt, right? But a whole new bunch of uh, jobs get started, get, get created. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the opportunity is, right? And, and it always at the forefront of, you know, innovation that, that happens. Right. Uh, when we're thinking about uh, thinking machines, uh, robots, in Sri Lanka, what is your ideal situation? What industries can be replaced? I would not say replaced. I would say optimized. Right. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I think I think there's a huge opportunity in terms of the banking and financial services sector. I mean, we're talking about the economy. We are talking about making Sri Lanka an economic hub in the region. Mm -hmm. Now, how you, one of the ways of making that happen is to make it very efficient. Mm -hmm. So robotic process automation can be a huge provide huge benefits to the banking industry, insurance industry, right. uh, telcos, all of those kind of industries. Mm -hmm. So we can really become a hub in the region by adapting some of these technologies in my mind. You did mention that we, 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 are, we haven't even started yet, although there has been a revolution across the globe. Uh, where do you think we could start and uh, how can we make it sustainable? And, uh, what, what do you think we need to do to, in order to address these challenges going forward? So I think we facilitated that start to a certain extent, mm -hmm. being, being one of the foremost IT organizations in the country. We felt it our responsibility to make sure that everybody is aware of it. So we organized a CIO forum. Uh, we have, this was discussed and you know, people were made aware of it. Mm -hmm. I think every company can start some in, in some. Uh, you really look at a lot of the repetitive work that you are doing. Um, and some of those things are great candidates. And you look at the ROI that you get by automating that. Mm -hmm. um, and we, this is a robotic process automation is a very lightweight uh, mechanism, right? It's not a month of Sundays to implement something. It's weeks to implement something. So I think there's a, uh, there's a lot of places where you can start, especially in the industry today. Mm -hmm. I, I believe the banking financial services industry is the first place to start. There would still be certain uh, industries that cannot be optimized, as you say. So uh, if you look at the manufacturing industry, there's a lot of optimization that has already happened. So I, I, I feel that we are really looking at the industries that are more customer centric, mm -hmm. um, uh, where which, which needs to improve customer experience. And there will be a lot of collateral benefit by introducing automation, right. especially in terms of customer experience. I mean, all our telcos can use that mm -hmm. uh, as an example, right? right. Uh, and uh, airline services can use that certainly. Uh, so some of those industries where you get a lot of collateral benefit, or there's a lot of cost of errors, mm -hmm. right? You know, even the airline industry and some of those uh, industries, the uh, even in the apparel industry, there's a huge cost of errors, right? If you actually got get the orders wrong or the or the some sample mix wrong, mm -hmm. there can be a big cost in terms of shipping another another batch, for example, right? right. So those kind of kind of industries can really leverage this uh, technology to to get a lot of collateral benefits in, in addition to the cost savings mm -hmm. and really become very competitive across the world. I think if they adapt it faster than others, they can be much more competitive and get a larger market share in the, in the world. So uh, yeah, while we look at those, in, in Sri Lanka, what sort of infrastructure should we have in place? 
in order to create that smooth implementation of uh, this framework? I, I believe the infrastructure is, the, um, we are talking about the IT software here. Is, we, we are talking about robotic process of automation is um, not a complex solution. It's just right. a software that people employ mm -hmm. to really do the automation at a level that is done by humans. So, uh, unlike traditional IT, you are really looking at mimicking the actions of human beings right. and co almost coding that into the mm -hmm. software, right? And that's done in a very configuration centric way. So, so the infrastructure is already in place. Uh, as long as you have basic IT infrastructure, you can make use of this technology. So, there's not a lot of complicated technology that you need. Right. Uh, and then the next level will be where you are talking about AI and cognitive and all of those mm -hmm. kind of technologies, which is where some sophistication comes from the mm -hmm. picture. I think to me, I've been thinking that there is there's really a robot doing all that work in a services industry. But this is this is far more advanced than what we've seen before and what we are uh, yet to experience. Yes. Um, I think this would also be uh, something very important in the public sector in Sri Lanka because we're thinking of cutting down costs, uh, making uh, creating efficient services. What what sort of a recommendation do you have going forward for Sri Lanka's public sector? Absolutely. I mean, uh, public sector is a great place for implementing some of the robotic process of uh, um, automation, uh, automations, right? And if you really want to be a streamline, uh, create a streamlined environment for businesses to operate in, we need to optimize our public sector. And robotic process automation is a great way of doing that. Really automate a lot of the manual processes that are time taking and uh, cumbersome today, mm -hmm. and increase the customer experience uh, to the public, general public, and to businesses. So that can that can really become a catalyst for you know spawning a lot of other businesses uh, mm -hmm. around around Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, that's a very good place to start also. Right. Uh, I think we've just got a minute to go on the program, but I'd like to ask you what innovate, uh, innovative uh, aspects are you looking at personally working in your company? I know I read somewhere that you know you you have been the own architect, uh, the the key architect of your company's own RPA system. What are you looking forward to, and what 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 do we expect from you? I think the future is looking very bright. I mean, we 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 have partnership with companies where who are looking at artificial intelligence and cognitive computing in a big way. I, I don't know whether you know this, but uh, recently, there was an artifici artificial intelligent lawyer mm -hmm. called Ross uh, that, uh, that actually has can answer questions about mm -hmm. uh, about you know le uh, legal questions, right? So we can ask uh, ask uh, Ross questions in natural language, and it will answer with the citations and all of that. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a minute, right? Now you can really disrupt the way you provide legal services. The same kind of advancements are happening in the medical industry. You can you know. Uh, AI robot can have more knowledge than a doctor because it it can it has knowledge of all of the journals that are out there and all of that, right? right. And I think the companies are moving towards uh, really providing all of this knowledge in in a very disruptive form to the end customer, and and the possibilities are endless. Uh, so I think we are really looking at some of those capabilities. How do we now incorporate some of those capabilities in uh, of thinking machine thinking machines? Right? right, that has been a dream mm -hmm. to some of these uh, assets that we have. Right. I think this is a topic that needs uh, more discussion, debate, and I wish we had more time on this program, but we look forward to having you uh, once again on Weekend Dialogue. Thank you for your time here in our studios. Thank you, Indy. Thank you so much. We had with us uh, Chandika Mendes, Global Head of Engineering for Virtue Supporter, is joining us on Weekend Dialogue. Do stay with us after this break. We have more coming up on this round.